Hello, hello kiddos. Uh, this is Dr. Anna and we're gonna start working on chapter 3. I didn't mean to say kiddos anyways, but we are gonna work on chapter 3 which is the mineral chapter and um, we're gonna start with definition of the minerals and this five thing you have to know at any time, always, every time, all the time. Minerals are naturally occurring, they are inorganic, they have crystalline structure, uh, they have definite chemical properties, and because of the crystalline structure and the chemical properties, they have a set of physical properties, and those are the things we're going to use to define the minerals well, you have to know. So it's very important that you know this five things, and actually you can check it. Like, what do you think? Is I a mineral? So, is ice naturally occurring? Yes. Is it unorganic? Yes. Does it have crystalline structure? Yes. Does it have definite chemical properties? Yes, it's H2O. Does it have definite physical properties? Yes. Ice will melt at zero degrees Celsius. It makes hexagonal crystals, so it is a mineral. How about amber? Okay, is it naturally occurring? Yes. Is it inorganic? Uh oh, this is where the problem is. Amber is the sap of the tree, so it's not inorganic. It doesn't have crystalline structure. It has chemical and physical properties, but because of those two, amber does not count as mineral. Now, there is another thing which we call mineraloid. Mineraloid is where inside there is no crystalline structure, it grew too fast, so therefore it couldn't form, and we, everything else is the same as mineral, except mineraloid does not have mineral structure, and opal is a very good example for that opal. On this figure, you can see a beautiful Australian tree trunk and in between the um, fibers actually you have the beautiful beautiful iridescent Australian opal everywhere you see all the opals everywhere it's beautiful so this takes us to start talking about the minerals and their composition and as you know minerals just like every other matter are made up of elements and if you look at the periodic table which is right here the periodic table uh, we have more than a hundred element and um, th there are a couple which you don't know yet but they are actually uh, calculated based on the so-called periodic table and right here you can see the periodic table and it was done by a, a Russian um, chemist. His name is Mendeleev. And what is important about Mendeleev that what he did, at the time they didn't know very many elements, so what Mendeleev did is that he put the symbol of the elements from left to right based on their weight. The heavier they become, the more they went to the right. And um, when, when he found something very similar, then he made, he went down. He put the element right underneath. So this is important that you have the, the elements in the horizontal lines going from left to right, and they are getting heavier. And if you go down in a column, they are very, very similar chemically and physically and in every way. Now this... Uh, periodic table shows elements you'll have to know. It is very important that um, you actually have to learn the name of these. That you have to know their names and you have to know their, their chemical symbol, okay? And some of them are missing on this one, so you have to go and, and memorize them all. So you have the sodium, the magnesium, and you'll have to know the aluminum, of course. You'll have to know the silicon, the phosphorus, 
these are very important elements. I don't even know how could I have left it out. The sulfur, you have to know the chlorine. And I think most of the ones now I, I put in. So you're good to go, strontium. You don't have to know any of this. You have to know the, yeah, you have, yeah, I think this is it. I just left those out. So these are the elements you do have to memorize. That You have to know the name and the symbol, but you don't have to know anything else. You don't have to remember atomic number or anything. So all you have to know is just the symbol and the name. Like hydrogen is H, lead is PB, uh, mercury is uh, AG, and so on. So that's what you got to know. So now we're going to talk about the formation of compounds. First of all, the, the atoms and its parts. How do they bond? The formation of ions. We're going to talk about ionic bond, covalent bond, and metallic bond. So let's jump. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about the atoms. Atom has two main parts. One is the nucleus, and the nucleus is right here in the middle of the atom nucleus. In the nucleus, we have two kind of particles, the protons, the protons and the neutrons. 